Hi there, welcome to Play Tennis Practice Yoga. My name is Margaret Bannon. I teach tennis and yoga, but my favorite thing to teach is yoga for tennis. And today we're gonna to do that as it relates to the shoulders. So just to let you know, this practice was inspired by my own shoulder. You know, as a tennis player, there's a good chance that you've had some discomfort in your shoulder, especially as it relates to that serve. And so this little practice should be appropriate for most in dealing with rotator cuff issues, or maybe you just notice general tension when you're serving from having these arms out in front. And so give these a shot and let me know what you think. They're simple yet pretty effective. So all you need for today's practice is a tennis racket. And the only other thing that I have is something to support my head. Today I have a yoga block. As the last thing we're going to do, we're going to be on the ground. Uh, with that said, if the movements with the tennis racket don't work for your body, know that you can practice a lot of these things with a nice towel so that your hands can be a little wider in width. All right, so we're gonna get started. And the way that I like to start off my yoga practices are by doing a little bit of centering. And so we'll do that to begin. That's just gonna help us find a little more focus as we go out through our practice. Okay, so we're gonna find what we call mountain pose. And mountain pose, we have the feet about inner hips width apart, and we start to feel the feet a bit more grounded. As that happens, we'll start to bring a little more firmness in the legs, and from the strength of the legs, we'll come to stand up a little bit taller. If you're comfortable doing so, let's go ahead and close the eyes. If not, you can simply focus on something straight ahead. Again, take a moment to feel feet. Now with the eyes closed, a moment to feel the legs, lengthen all the way up through the spine. And for today, I'd like you to draw your shoulders forward, up, back, and down, seeing if you can soften the shoulders a bit more here. Maybe notice any tension you're holding in your arms, see if you can let that go. And as you do that, start to notice your breath. I don't want you to change the breath at all. I just want you to be with it. And maybe observe how the breath relates to the shoulders. In fact, might you invite your breath into the shoulders, into the chest, the upper body a little bit more. Staying with natural breath or maybe even gently deepening the breath a little bit now. It's possible that you feel a gentle expansion in through the chest on inhale. And a gentle release of the shoulders away from the ears on exhale. Let's take three more breaths, just preparing for our practice just as you might before going out onto the court, taking a couple moments for yourself just to check in with body and mind. And then let's go ahead and come to open our eyes. All right, so let's find our tennis racket. I'm gonna grab my racket. I'm gonna come back to this mountain pose. This is our base. Uh, in yoga, if you're not too familiar with yoga, it's kind of like our ready position to the rest of the postures. And so I'm gonna back up a little bit, even though you're gonna lose my arms as my arms come up overhead, you'll see what, what I'm doing. So I'm coming back to that mountain pose stance, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my racket, I'm gonna gently pull out with my hands a little bit. So I'm creating a little bit of tension. So in fact, you'll be getting a little bit of strengthening, a little bit of sneaky strength, as well as an opening through the shoulder. So just see how this feels for you. We're going to be doing some short number of reps today. You could do more reps if this feels okay. I think this is a nice general way to begin just to see how your body responds to these movements. So in pulling out on that racket with my hands, I'm going to reach my arms up overhead on an inhale. And as I exhale, I'm gonna maintain that tension in pulling out with the racket as I exhale. I'm going to inhale and reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, I'm going to lower down. And so the important thing here 
is that you're beginning to follow the rhythm of your own breath now, now that you know what you're doing. So what that means is you might feel that I'm going too slow or too fast for you. And so you're looking to tailor this movement to your breath pace. And so as we approach our fifth round, I want you to hold it once you get there. And so fine tune, feeling the feet, firming up the thighs, lengthen all the way up through the spine and feel as if your hands are reaching up towards the sky or towards the ceiling, maybe tug out on that racket a little bit more and slowly lower it down. So your arms might not have gone up as high as mine did. You'll stop when you need to. Okay, maybe just kind of roll out the shoulders here as you start to wake them up. Okay, so second movement, the beginning will be the same where we're tugging out on that racket. This time we'll inhale, and as we do about halfway through, we're going to bend our elbows. See how my elbows are in line with my shoulders and I'm still pulling out with my hands. As I exhale, same thing, but now I'm going in reverse. So it's an inhale coming into that cactus-like shape as we say in yoga. Also, we call this goalpost arms. That, that cue might resonate with you a little bit more if you're a sports fan. We're inhaling as we bend the elbows notice how this might feel different with regards to shoulders chest really nice to be doing these openings for all of our movements in tennis where the hands are forward so we're just trying to counter what we do on court so as we approach our last one Let's hold it, again, fine tune, pulling out with your hands. If you start with your base of mountain pose, work your way up and now notice what's happening in your chest. See if you can breathe as easily as you did in our initial centering practice. And now let's go ahead and slowly come on out. Again, come to roll the shoulders a bit you might even go one at a time, especially if the shoulders feel quite different. That's kind of a nice variation. And then we'll come into what I think is one of the better yoga for tennis moves, especially as it relates to the serve. It's called cow face arms. It's one half of a full pose in yoga. And so I'm going to take my racket into my dominant hand. So that might be opposite of what you're seeing. And you're gonna come into the back scratch position. Okay, so I'm hoping that you know what that is if you play tennis. I've got my racket behind me, just kind of hanging my elbows pointing upward. And then I'm going to bring the opposite arm up and draw the elbow in a little closer to the center of the body. So nice little tricep stretch here in preparation for this pose. And now I'm gonna reach that arm out beside me. I'm gonna turn my hand, bend the elbow, and take a hold of the racket. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around just so that you can see the view a little bit better. I'm gonna start off low, but then I'm gonna to start to inch my fingers up towards the throat of the racket, maybe even bring my hands a little closer together. This is one of those poses that it's very easy to force. So you're trying to find the balance between under and over working here. And you're seeing if you can breathe comfortably because if you can't that might be a sign that you need to back off a little bit i know that as tennis players you're used to pushing your body and ignoring some of these signs that come up as we practice i know that all too well so i'm on to you and then go ahead and let go with that bottom hand all right shake it out a little bit and then let's try the other side. So now I'm gonna come into a back scratch position on the other side. It might feel a little strange if you're working with the non-dominant side. But again, I'll come to draw this elbow in a little closer to the body. So mindful that you're keeping your neck, your jaw relaxed here. As you reach that arm out to your side, turn the palm, take a hold of the racket. Again, I'm starting low, making it easier. And I'm inching my way up. Again, the side might be very different from first side. So just see if you can notice what's different about it without judging. And 
Notice your breath. As you feel challenged in the pose, this is a good skill to acquire in yoga, right? As we get challenged on the court, it's beneficial to come to the breath in between those points to even things out, so to speak. And then let's go ahead and release. Again, shake it out a little bit. All right. So in this next move, we're going to have the racket out in front of us like so. I'm going to stand sideways just to help you see what's happening a little bit easier. So I'm still in this mountain pose stance. In fact, it's kind of like I'm in my ready position stance, right? Because I'm going to have my knees bent. Here's my ready position. Again, here I am with my arms forward. So we're trying to counter some of these uh, actions and doing the opposite. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. So in yoga, we call this chair pose or utkatasana. Although I'm not taking it very deep, it's like I'm taking an upright chair pose or ready position, take your pick. So I want you to start in that stance and then I want you to have your racket out in front of you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them pull out with my hands just as I've been doing all along. I'm going to inhale and this time I'm going to draw again with tension. I'm pulling that racket towards my chest. You're trying to draw those elbows, those shoulder blades together. And then I'm gonna come on out to the starting position. So I'm going to inhale, draw it in towards the chest. Exhale, push out, kind of like a rowing machine action here. Inhale, come in. Exhale, push it out. And let's try that a couple more times. shoulder blades together, pushing out. Very nice. Let it go. In other words, it's really important that we do front body opening, back body strength for yoga. And so this will be another thing that would help you feel that. So now we're going to take that racket behind us. Now I want those legs to be a little straighter in that mountain pose. And again, I'll pull out with my hands. You see a theme here. So I'm going to reach my arms back behind me a bit. You'll see my hands lift up a bit. Exhale, I'm going to lower down. Inhaling, I'm going to come up and back. It might go a little further, maybe, maybe not. Exhale, lower down. Let's try that about three more times. Seeing if things change with the more rounds that we take. And then on the last one, we'll hold it. Again, I'm pulling out with my hands. I'm standing up tall. Maybe feel the lift of your chest here, moving towards what we would call maybe a slight back bend in yoga. And then Let's go ahead and come on out. Ooh, I'm feeling that. I don't know if you are, but I sure am. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is by coming down onto the ground, we call this the sleeper stretch. For me, it's one of the most important movements for my shoulders. Oftentimes I can get a little self-adjustment in the shoulder by the way of a little click or crack, and I always get excited when I hear that. Doesn't mean you should be looking out for that, right? All of our bodies are different here. I'm gonna place my racket down and now I'm going to come onto my side. As I do that, I'm going to have my knees bent at about 90 degrees and I'm going to support my head. Today I'm using a block. I'm going to come onto my elbow. My elbow is in line with my shoulder. My hand is facing upward. And as I rest the hand, or sorry, as I rest down, I'm going to take my top hand and take a hold of this wrist area. Okay, so the arm is going to stay in the same shape as I inhale. And as I exhale, I'm going to move the forearm towards the ground. Inhale, I'm going to come out. Exhale, I'm going to guide that forearm down towards the ground. For me, it generally feels pretty tight initially, and then things begin to loosen up. And as we've been doing, when we get to that last round, we're going to go ahead and hold it 
You might have noticed it's as if we're teasing out the body little by little. And then once the body is a little more prepared, we hold. So moving from dynamic to static movements or static holds rather. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come on out. So you could just slip over, but I'm just going to slip in this fashion so that you can see me a little easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the opposite side, supporting my head, coming onto my side. If you're sensitive to the ground, you can always pad underneath the body a little bit. Again, notice how my elbows bent, my hands up towards the sky. I'm going to take my hand to this wrist. I want you to slowly guide it down towards the ground. As I exhale, I'm moving towards the ground. As I inhale, I come on out. And on the last one, I'm gonna hold it. And then I'll come on out. All right, so that's the last of the movements. However, we're not done with our practice. Just like we started off in our initial centering practice, let's close with a brief meditation. Sometimes we'll do a relaxation as well. So we'll keep it brief. But really important to take this time in transition before we move on to the next thing. So I'm using my block to sit on again. So you might find it helpful to sit up a little higher for comfort. You could also do this portion seated in a chair. And as I feel the grounding of my hips, I'm gonna go ahead and relax my hands to my legs. Again, I'm gonna close my eyes or you might focus on something straight ahead. Take a moment to feel the grounding of your hips just as you felt your feet a moment ago when we were standing. And from the base of your legs, sit up a little bit taller. And one more time, draw these shoulders forward and now up towards the ears and back and down and away from the ears. Feel that lift of the chest as you observe your breath. Maybe even invite your breath into the shoulders, into the chest as well, in addition to other areas of the body. Notice if anything has changed from start to end in your practice. We'll take just a couple more moments just to be here in the present moment how the body feels, making that mind-body connection before we move on. And then bring your palms together in front of your heart. You can allow your gaze to open. Thank you so, so much for trying this practice out. I hope that you experience the benefits of yoga as I have, not only just for your tennis game, but uh, maybe to enhance your life a little bit. And so thanks for practicing. I would love for you to subscribe to our channel for more practices. And I might even suggest a practice for you here at the end of the video. And happy practicing. Hope to see you soon. Namaste.